So Elliot will make the long walk to the ambulance and the ride to the infield care center to get checked out, but he looks A-OK. -okay. Michael Annette, he has got uh, damage on his left rear quarter panel, although he is able to get it back. Let's take another look, see what happened. Well, you can see right there, looks like Kenny Wallace got tagged. That was a net, and the yeah, comes Annette. in behind that. And right there you saw Mike worried about the 62 coming back high, and he ends up getting into the tail end of it. Yeah, that's Todd Bodine, right. who was trying to push Michael on the net there. You have to be really, really careful as you get to the corners. You know you want to stay latched on and attached. See Tony Stewart barely sneaking by there. Ricky Stenhouse looks like he's got a little bit of damage. I notice he's on pit road right now working on that car. Elliot Sadler, nowhere to go whatsoever. We can tell you Michael Annette has made it back to pit road as well. So Michael has the old one of Mike Wallace. Yeah, Mike just got that last part. Here's the second impact. See, Mike was going around the other car on the bottom, and he thought he could swing back low on this car, but he just couldn't do it. From Clint Boyers on board. Outside, next car, spin behind you, spin behind you, come on. You're clear, you're clear. Outside, outside, caution, caution. Nice job, nice job. That's when you're sitting in the seat just wondering if that car is going to clip you as it comes back. You see just how close that's going to be for Clint Boyer right here. Wow. And we've got uh, most of the second half of the field taking advantage of this opportunity to come down pit road. Leader stayed out all the way through the top 13 cars. Kyle Busch, we can tell you, is shown as our race leader with Brad Keselowski second, Joey Logano third, Trevor Bain fourth, and Todd Bodine in fifth. There you see uh, Carl Edwards as uh, he has yet to find his way up towards the front of this field. Reed Sorensen still trying to battle back from where he had to start. Well, you see a lot of people changing tires. Jeremy Clements gets going. A lot of them are changing because of all the debris on the track. A lot of them probably ran through that and want to make sure they don't have a hole. Gives us an opportunity to step aside because we're going to be under the caution for a little bit to clean up the mess here at Daytona. Our race is presented today by GoDaddy.com. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, continues today. First at 4 Eastern, Reggie Jackson of Boston College face a rejuvenated number 19 Tar Heels team led by Tyler Zeller. I like how you say that. I was just giving you an opportunity. Then at thing. 6 Eastern, Isaiah <laughs> Thomas and the Washington Huskies face a key contest against the ranked Pac-10 foe. They take on number 13, Arizona, led by Derek Williams. It's college basketball, ESPN Today. Both games available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. From the pit studio, Alan Rusty and Brad, 27 laps into the 120 that make up today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race. Clean it up a big mess down in turn number two uh, as they tow away the cars of Elliott Sadler and some of those others uh, damaged in the wreck. You see we're on the double up and one to go before the restart. Carl Edwards with problems uh, reporting earlier engine troubles. He's been on pit road a couple of times with the hood up under this yellow, Jamie. Alan, yes, he said he was down a cylinder. It didn't sound right. They came in, they checked the plug wires. Then they exchanged ignition boxes. Then he pulled away and said it still sounds bad. You see him there. That's his onboard camera taking it back to the garage. He said, guys, I think we're blowing up. And for more on what is going on with Carl Edwards, let's go to the Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Thanks, Jamie. The first thing they do when they come down pit road is open a hood. They're trying to identify which cylinder it is. How do you do that? You can take an infrared sensor and monitor each exhaust tube, or you can take a piece of crayon and touch on it. The one that's not working is not going to melt the crayon. But there again, these engines turn a lot of RPMs. They might be looking, if it's not a plug wire, might be a broken valve spring. It'll change the sound of the engine. Guys? Tim, thanks for that look as we look down on Daytona International Speedway, courtesy of Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Everything we've learned making tires for one of racing's most grueling proving grounds inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Intense, interesting so far, and coming to a restart, uh, what will be at the completion of the 28th lap. You see on the inside lane, Kyle Busch with now Brad Keselowski, 22 to the outside of him. Uh, Joey Logano and 
the uh, 16 car of Trevor Bain lined up in row number two. This wrapping up the second caution of this race as we go up to Marty, DJ, and Andy. Thank you, Alan. 32 cars on the lead lap. A total of eight either off or out of this race right now. Sam Hornish Jr. got the lucky dog. He's still, though, three laps down. It's Kyle Busch, as Alan pointed out, on the inside. Brad Keselowski right beside him. He's got his dance partner right behind him. And Joey Logano in third. So Kyle Busch comes to the stripe, and we're back to green flag racing here on lap number 29. the backstretch. The four car attack right now in third and fourth is Brad Keselowski with Trevor Bain giving him a push. Look a little bit further back. You saw Danica Patrick. She's running in sixth with Clint Boyer. We've seen these partnerships kind of shift around and change on these restarts. Now it looks like Boyer really is last on good with Danica. They should be able to go to the front if they can stay like this. Well, She's going to get a lesson, that's for sure. Here comes Tony Stewart also in that mix. That's Eric Almirola trying to hook up with him. Yeah, but she did a much better job there in getting that 33 car owner bumper now. They've cleared that pack. Going to try to run down these leaders. Clint Boyer's a good one for her to have back there. He's got a lot of experience on how to do this. Do you in the 33. Spotter telling him it's just you two right now. And they are closing. Here they come on oh, yeah. the inside. Oh, yeah, here we go. And he is giving her the push right past Keselowski and Bain. Oh yeah, she, they're going to get they're going to get to the lead here. Kyle Busch still up front. The question is for how long? You can see the differential and how quickly they are closing. Will we have our six different leader this time by? It's going to be close, but it looks like Kyle May. No, oh. Danica. Danica Patrick is going to lead. Remember, she led four laps back at Homestead, so now she's led two races in a row. The question is, what kind of finish is she going to get today here at Daytona? Now, we're talking about would people draft with these younger, inexperienced drivers. If you've got a car like Danica's got today, they'll run with you, I promise. You see the stack there? First one to lead a lap here at Daytona in a NASCAR-sanctioned event. But here come on the bottom side, Brad Keselowski and Trevor Baines saying, yo, we'd like that position back, please. Here we go with another lead change at the stripe. Brad Keselowski, it'll be our 12th lead change in 31 laps. Those four still side by side, and they have opened up ground over Logano and Kyle Busch. About a full second. There you see the gap back to them. Running laps of 46 seconds around here. They are flying. If you want to know what the track record for lead changes is, 35, set back in 1986. We've had 12 already in 31. I say we ought to have that done by about lap 60. This is great stuff, these two, and she is getting an education rapidly here. Yeah, they're averaging 194, 195 miles an hour on these laps. That's uh, 15 miles an hour faster than they qualify. Yeah, and the good thing here is that these uh, Kevin Harvick cars are able to stay tucked in. Clint Boyer's getting just enough air to it that he can stay behind Danica and keep pushing where they don't have to make this switch. There's Boyer trying to get more air on his uh, front. He's got to make the switch here soon. They've been going several laps. Here it comes. Okay, the key's going to be, can she get in there and get last stone to Clint? they got the perfect situation when they have this two... Uh, Four car group actually in front of them busting a little bit of that air while they make the swap. But they're, they're losing, losing a, lot a lot of ground. Time. A lot of time. Yeah, they got to get this done a little quicker. And, it, and she's got to help. She's got to slack off just a little bit and get behind him. In fact, they he never. wants me to get behind him and push. I can try that and, and just tell me what I need to do with him because I don't know. I'm just keeping it flat. So she's trying to find out does she want, does he want her to push? And Let him get to you here. Now Clint can't just sit back there and run, uh, you know, a lot of laps. He's got to get air to the front of that car. Yeah, they lost about two seconds to those lead cars just on that lap in trying to make that switch. Yeah, and you can see even the Joe Gibbs cars with Gano and Bush, they, they're losing a lot of time when they're making that switch too, but they, they get lashed on pretty quickly and gain it back. 
And now the tandem of Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch have opened up some space over third and fourth place. I tell you what, guys, today and tomorrow, if I'm looking for a partner, I want Trevor Bain on my bumper. This young man knows how to get it done. He's doing a terrific job. I think it's going to pay big dividends, maybe for him getting himself in a position to pull out and win either today or tomorrow. We're still under green and getting word. Yes, the 66 of Stephen Wallace is making his way to pit road. This is unscheduled. He's the first pit box in. May have a tire down. It really looked like that right front was down on the ground, possibly. Our over-the-wall man, Mark Hollywood Armstrong, giving us the bird's eye view there as he's the front tire changer for that team. Meanwhile, on the left side of your screen, you can see the they're all clear. four cars that are running first through fourth. No change up Don't there. Speed. 4,400 to the count. So Steven's going to get back out, but he is going to go a lap down. Here come the Gibbs cars on the outside again. On the high side, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. They are going to push their way back to the lead. Through turns one and two. Keselowski and Trevor Bain doing all they can to hold them off. Side by side down the back stretch. Inching ahead, the Joe Gibbs duo. You can see where that experience is really paying off at the front. These cars have distanced themselves quite a bit from the pack. And we saw Danica was able to run all the way to the lead, but you got to coordinate those switches to be able to stay up there. Yeah, and she lost her uh, partner with Clint Boyer, and she's dropped back to the ninth position. Boyer's dropped all the way back to 18th. The next car in line behind Danica now is Dale Jr. Maybe they can hook up and get back to the front. Now look at this uh, mix-up here. Is all of a sudden, both of them were trying to make the change at the same time. Got a little dicey, but they sorted out. Trevor Bain in front of Keselowski, and here comes Joey. they got to be having a ton of fun out there, Dale. Oh, these guys say it's, it's fun and trying to coordinate and make all of this happen, but they do tell me it is a lot of work to really coordinate that and, and keep it working in the proper way. Dale Jr. passing his teammate, Danica Patrick. Will they try and hook up? Hey, we heard Dale Jr. say in the pre-race show, it's all about number one. He's going to go to the front. They're seventh and eighth, and well now seventh and ninth, and Junior has got Joe Nemechek coming up behind him. Looks like they're going to hook up. Slower traffic. That's the 14, Eric McClure, as he has put a lap down by the race leaders. And these four cars still going after each other, lap after lap. We've had 15 lead changes now in 37 laps. That's that start-finish line. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. The one thing that we're not seeing that we've seen a lot down here in the past is the side drafting, and they're just not able to do that as they run in these tandems as much because it's harder for that second guy to see exactly what they need to do, and it can create problems for them. So they're just, they're just utilizing the sheer speed that they have by staying locked on to each other. The 40 of Scott Wimmer was the slow car on the low side of the track. If you get stranded out by yourself, you are in deep trouble. While we continue to watch all this action, Dr. Jerry Punch is caught up with a disappointed Elliot Sadler. Yeah, uh, Elliot out of the medical center. Okay, Elliot, from your vantage point, what happened out there? I'm not real sure. I was, uh, you know, we were trying to tan him and make our way to the front. And I just found my teammate, Clint Boyer, and was going to get in line with him. And I looked up, and the 62 was sideways. So i um, not sure. And with the smoke and not sure how far I can move up, I was kind of hoping he was going to slide to the racetrack, and he didn't. And um, we just tore up a good race car, and it's a, it's a shame. We wanted to try to make it to the end. and. We tried to put ourselves in a good situation and race around the people we wanted to race with, and it just uh, wasn't meant to be. But got a lot of people here uh, with KHI today, a lot of people here from One Main Financial. We're going to go try to fix the car because one point is very important these days, so we're going to try to get back out there. Not a way that he wants to start a championship chase. Marty? Absolutely, Doc. As you see Trevor Bain and Brad Keselowski, they've opened up about a second lead over the Joe Gibbs pair. And we are now, after 39 of 120 laps here at our race, presented by GoDaddy.com. Welcome back to the drive for COPD 300 at Daytona. And make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. That shot you saw, there they are, the top four runners. It's Keselowski Bain, followed by Bush and Logano, a little bit further back. In fact, about oh, 11 more seconds back is Tony Stewart and Clint Boyer. They have hooked up, and they are coming. 
But this is the biggest margin that a, a breakaway group, if we can call it that, the first four have given themselves. And you notice at the bottom of the scan, bottom of your screen there, there is the 60 of Carl Edwards. He has just come back out on track. He is 12 laps down. Dave, what's the story? Marty, they changed everything electrical on that 60 car. Talked to the tuner, Troy Couples, and he told me they took it all out, put it back in. When it left, though, it didn't sound that great, and a lot of people were still shaking their heads in that Roush Fenway camp. Well, you saw him get passed by the quartet that is the front runners of this field. And you can see his last lap compared to the leaders. Brad Keselowski now in front of Trevor Bain. We've had 16 lead changes, and a lot further back is a swarm that's, uh, well, they're 12 seconds behind the group on the right, and one of those guys that's been coming, in fact, two of them, have been Tony Stewart and Clint Boyer. There they are. Let's get an update on the four car, Vince Welch. Well, Tony Stewart's had one of those up and down days. He was running up front, led the race early on. Then they came for that initial pit stop and he stalled the car in the pit. So he lost several positions and has had to come from deep in the field again. But once Clint Boyer hooked up with him, the two have really been on the move, making their way back toward the front. Stewart also had a close call earlier, made a little contact with the car trying to draft. Thought maybe he might have punched a hole in the front end, but the team says it all looks good at this point. He and Clint, a couple of KHI cars hooked together. Still 12 seconds behind the uh, quartet that is out front. Maybe we should change this. Maybe should, this should be like the pair skating championships where it would be <laughs> Keselowski Bain in first, and then you've got Logano and Bush in third. Because there's no breathing room between the bumpers on these cars. And on the left side, you can see that Stewart and Boyer have pulled away from the rest of that group. They've pulled three seconds ahead of Sorensen, Earnhardt, Leffler, Nemechek, Clements, Howard, and Patrick. Yeah, it looks like Stewart and uh, Boyer are able to run comparable lap times to these front four, but they've lost so much ground already.